want to have uh, a unique musical voice. And, and I think the reason why is because when you're especially playing in front of a live audience, you want to give them a unique experience. So as a musician, you, you want to contribute to people's experiences, you want to contribute to the kind of the music world in general, and, and uh, it gives you a sense of satisfaction. Some of us want to keep this in our culture, uh, and it's something we can do here in Williamsburg. And I, you know, with the harmonica, in a sense, I, I keep the glass harmonica in the 21st century culture, at least the folks that come here. We want to express ourselves, and uh, one of the ways you can do this is you, you find sounds and instruments that allow you to express the musician within, uh, and, and certainly the harmonica and you know, these others have have um, allowed me to do this in maybe a way that I, I couldn't without the glass instruments. The harmonica was really what kind of opened my eyes uh, to the possibility of glass instruments. And then once you get into you know, playing glass instruments, you meet other glass musicians and glass artists who want to you know, try things. Ideas come up, you know, we started talking about making glass bells, so glass bells came along. pushing the envelope with some of these things. You know, because in some cases, these are the only instruments that exist. This is why, for one example, the bells are so far back on the stage, because I know that one day when I'm gonna, I'm gonna strike one of those bells, it's just gonna shatter, it's gonna go all over the stage. Whether I consider myself a glass musician first, I'm not so sure, because uh, I do write music too, and I play, there's still, you know, I still have a wooden violin that I play all the time and play piano. Uh, but I certainly enjoy being a glass musician. I don't mind being you know, thought of that way. Uh, do I think of myself that way? I think of myself in part that way. <laughs> There are only two glass violins that I know of. They made that one as the first one, and uh, then they made one more afterwards. But what I realize is the fact that people are just in awe that here's a, a hand-blown glass violin that actually plays. I mean, that alone uh, is worth seeing and hearing. So I wrote a piece of music that I hope uh, shows some of the, the better qualities of the instrument. The instrument that I'm most comfortable with in my hands is the violin because I took so many years of studying violin, but now I'm doing it in glass. Uh, the one I'm maybe most excited about is the crystal bache because it's an instrument that can do so many things.
really does feel like the action of the violin bow because the glasses are, are meant to kind of bend a little bit. It was kind of a, an adventure a little bit, you know, to try something that different uh, and a challenge. And I, I didn't really know where it was going to lead. I didn't know how, what the audience response would be. Um, but I didn't want my concerts just to be trying to sound as close as I can to something else they've already heard. What drives me to, to keep all of it going at the same time is I realized I need it. Uh, I need to have the performances to work towards. I'm not one of those musicians that could just sit around and play at home because I, I do think of music as communication. Uh, so I realize if I'm just learning it from my own ability, uh, there's some satisfaction to that, but that's what drives me. I think with glass instruments, uh, it's, it's uncharted territory. And I think that somebody should be out there, you know, finding out what we can do with it. And I don't want to miss out on that chance.